We Brits are a nation of obsessive collectors. Across the country, there are storage units straining at the seams, wow. <laughs> groaning garages, and stuffed garden sheds. Wow, oh I've God. forgotten how much stuff I've had. Home to dreams. My director's chair. Past lives. That's unbelievable. And untold baggage. And we're drowning in it. Heaven's sake, what are all these things? But among the clutter and the junk... Empty box! Ooh. My mission is to find buried treasure. 1,500 to 2,500 pounds there. Wow. Gosh. Unlock memories. There's a lot of memories in two boxes. And turn trash into cash. 260, 270, 280. Welcome to the world of storage hoarders. Our first hoarder is Kim Allen. Over the past year, she spent a thousand pounds on storage. Her sister, Wendy, thinks enough is enough. So how did Kim fall into the hoarding trap? I've been out of my house for a year and a half now. Yeah, been, um, my house is in modernization at the moment. So my stuff are in storage. And when I was putting everything in storage, I didn't realize how much junk I had Kim lives in Birmingham, a city with more canals than Venice and home to the biggest public library in Europe. And I imagine that's just the kind of space our collector could do with. I would say I've been collecting all my life. I find it very hard to detach from my stuff. I get attached to things like, like the people. You know, I find it very hard to get rid of things. And I'll pick it up and I'll think, Kim, do I still need these? And i read the words and i think, ah, and I keep it. You know, I can't get rid of anything. Terrible. I think there may be items in my storage that I haven't got a clue what you do with them. I just see it, like it, buy it. And when I get home, um, I look at it and think, what's it for? Kim's sister, Wendy, has had a lifetime dealing with Kim's hoarding habits. She does need help. She's a compulsive buyer. She did say to me, Wendy, stop me from buying, but I can't now because I taught her how to shop online. Big mistake. Every day, when I go to the house, there's a box from one of the stores for something that she's bought, and I can assure you she does not need it. I can't hide nothing from my sister because she's in my face 24-7. Well, Wendy's on board, but can Kim really put aside her hoarding ways and clean up and clear out once and for all? I haven't got a clue what's in there. So I can sit here and say, yes, um, I'll be ruthless and get rid of, and then I'll look at the thing and I'll think, oh. If Kim can control her compulsion, what will she do with any money she saves? Pay off my credit cards. Yeah, that would be a big help. Yeah, definitely. So can I help Kim declutter and downsize her debts? Show you in the right way, Kim. I haven't got a clue. It's now time for Kim to come face to face with her horrendous hoard. Wow. My God. Oh my I've God. I've forgotten how much stuff I've had. What's in here? God knows. Gee, Kim, you got loads of stuff. The majority is just junk. I'll give you junk. <gasps> this could take some time. These sentimental sisters are in need of an intervention, so I'm going in. Hello, how are you? Oh, you've got quite a stash here, haven't you? I have. Do you know what's in here? Not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, what does it feel like standing here looking at this stuff? I just here? think to myself, I just want to close my eyes. Do I just, you? Honest to God, I just think, I can't believe. Yes. So I can't stuff. believe. Yes, it kind of I looks... really can't believe I've accumulated so much stuff. Mm. I mean, that item there, somebody must have bought it for Christmas, I think. But yesterday what, I spotted one in her garage and what was wondering it? Exactly. what it was. <laughs> it's got no label on it. This is mad, isn't I know. it? This looks more like a lucky dip. I'm dying to get stuck oh, into this. Dad. Great. It's great. That's it's good such news. a good challenge. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be easy. easy. It's easy for yeah. you, but not no, for no, me. No, no. If you're up for it, it's going to mm. be easy. Okay. You just let go of the past and think yeah, of the future. future. Yeah. Let's yeah. get in then. Yeah. Loads of black bags, Huggy. Yeah. Loads of black bags. Let's see. Spiebel Schneider, that's an onion slicer. Oh, is it? I bought this at the Good Food Show. So why don't you use it? <laughs> Answer that question, <laughs> could you, Kim, please? I really can't. 
pounds. Some of my hats for church. Really? Oh, You're a yes. church goer? I sure am. Are you? Now, hold on. This is going to go with your eyeshadow. Do you wear this? Gold. Oh, actually, that's gorgeous. Girls, I'm going to leave you to it. Can you get every single thing out? And I'll be yeah. back. Okay. okay, then. Oh, see you later. Bye. Bye. I think these girls have got their work cut out. Oh, be careful. That's 48 years old, you know. And this is where you put it. <laughs> <laughs> 48 years old. Remember. Oh, wow. Oh, my, my. These belong to Mum and Dad, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, it's a wedding anniversary. Oh, wow. Oh, can you remember these? Oh, oh my God. Do you remember Fiona? Because that's giving me the yeah. name, so I couldn't get Wendy. So I got Kim and Fiona. There's going to be plenty of surprises in store, that's for sure. Previously on Storage Orders, we met big-time collector Frank Bond, who has spent nearly £50,000 on storage over the past 27 years. Daughter Victoria thinks it's been long enough. Last time, we managed to get through only two of Frank's storage units. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> I don't know what it is. We're back to tackle his two remaining units to help him become storage-free. But first, how does he feel about his hoarding habits? Shock was the first thing. My first reaction was, I don't believe it. And those that are left now, I think we need to have a look at. Frank now lives in Eltham on the outskirts of London, a leafy suburb of over 60,000 people and birthplace of 80s superstar Boy George. For 90-year-old super hoarder Frank, time is now of the essence for dealing with his collection. The prime mover has been Victoria. They've always been on to me to do something about it, basically not because they want anything, it's actually to relieve the pressure on me paying all this money. But the seeds of his hoarding were sown on the other side of the world. Frank and his family moved to Hong Kong in 1974. For Frank's wife, Eileen, it was an opportunity to fill their palatial apartment with mementos of their time in the Far East. Eventually, the family had to return to the UK, along with the products of Eileen's 14 years of bargain hunting, collecting and hoarding. Their expat paraphernalia went straight into storage, where it stayed until now. When we opened the doors and saw the first two crates, I wanted to run away. Oh. But actually, once we started opening things, and um, it was amazing just to see stuff that I hadn't seen for years, uh, you know, my whole childhood box stuff. It was just, it was fantastic, to be honest. And uh, uh, now I've seen those things, I feel that I can be rid of them and maybe they will benefit somebody else's room, I don't know. This time, Victoria is hoping to unearth a few memories of her own. In the corner of my room, I have my director's chair um, where I would sit, so I don't know where that is, but uh, if it's still there, I'd love to see that again. Sadly, Eileen died a few years back, and Frank is keen not to have a horrible hoard as an heirloom for his family. If suddenly I disappear, they're left with a, a bill, and I don't want that to happen at all because it's nothing to do with them, it's to do with me. <laughs> so can I persuade Frank that it's never too late to do battle with his hoard? It's time to come face to face with the rest of their Hong Kong stash. Hello again. Hello, how are you? Nice to nice see, see you. Too. You've come back for more. It's never ending, isn't it? Yes. Two more massive crates. Mm -hmm. Yes. The big problem is mm -hmm. some of the things which I valued, well, I haven't found. There's also a large table which should, mm -hmm. could be in here uh -huh. and maybe some chairs. Right. <laughs> uh, and some other surprises. <laughs> Where are my muscle men? Can we have some help, please? Open sesame. A hole this hefty needs a helping hand. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh! <laughs> a few hundred boxes. Wow. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Aladdin's cave, isn't it? Are you it? feeling strong, guys? Yeah. <laughs> I'm I just I think I'm going to run and leave Come you guys on, to go <laughs> Time to get stuck in once again. We need a couple of your slaves. 
Yes, we've got them now. The sleeves have arrived. <laughs> Thank you. That's a wall oh, unit. Princess Trolley. <laughs> Lay them down there. How seventies. <laughs> okay. Dishes oh, and glass. Yes, careful with that then. And it's absolutely glass rammed wear. full. We'll, op we'll open it anyway. More paper. Oh, it's bound to be more paper. Before they get carried away, we need to unpack the remainder of Frank's hoard so they can have a proper look. Coming up, is that actual cash I can see among the trash? Another 20! You're having a laugh, Kim Allen! It's Victoria's turn to unpack some precious memories. Make sure their hats are not lampshades. <laughs> yes. And will our hopeful hoarders bid farewell to any hidden treasures at auction? Earlier on Storage Hoarders, we met Kim and her hoard that's out of sight, out of mind. Her sister Wendy is here to help hoover up her forgotten stash and put an end to a grand's worth of storage. <laughs> Do you know where the rest of this is? <laughs> I haven't got a clue. <laughs> and we return to help war veteran Frank do battle with his bulging time capsule crates. He's parted with nearly £50,000, storing his expat life for the past 27 years. But now daughter Victoria is taking the reins as she feels enough is enough. Hooray! <laughs> I haven't got one of those. There you go. And it works. They need to get everything out of their unit so they can see exactly what they've got. Oh, look, Wendy, Dad's records. How old are these, Kim? Oh, God knows. They're older than us, that's all oh, I know. Wow. I found them the space and brought in extra muscle to lend a hand. Oh, some chopsticks. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, isn't it? Can you look at you? Look at that afros. To help them come to terms with their collections, I want them to split their possessions into categories. Keep it for those really sentimental pieces. Skip it for anything old, broken or just plain awful. Or sell it for the items they think could be of value. I've also added a charity area where they can put anything that's too good to chuck. Later, I'll call on antiques expert Tom Keane, who has 20 years' experience. Can he find anything of value to take to auction? With everything out, it's a chance to see just what they've got. With all those black bags, Kim and Wendy's doesn't look promising. While Frank's professionally packed pile looks almost too good to open. Do you think this is going to be easy? Um, well, we've got a little bit of experience now, so it'd be easier be than before, but it's not going to be easy, is it? <laughs> no, it's never easy. Second time around, Victoria's wasting no time. My birthday all over again. <laughs> but a chance discovery brings back a few old memories. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? Oh. What year was this? Uh, that must have been 1983. Oh, 81. Oh, there you are. O-levels, yes. Let's <laughs> do that one. Oh, you did fine. Yeah, anyway, I got through a few of them, but yeah. Oh, I suppose I should keep that. <laughs> or maybe put it in the skip. <laughs> what do you think? Um, I've got to keep it, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll keep that, yes. Perhaps Victoria deserves to become a qualified declutterer if she can get through the remainder of Dad's hangover hoard today. So, Victoria, what have we got here? We've got lots and lots of hats. Oh, yes, well, uh, yeah. I think that was... My mother was a collector of... Uh, <laughs> Everything by the same <laughs> yes, of it. Absolutely, yes. These were actually on the wall, I think. Oh, uh, right. This one looks very... <laughs> Are you sure their hats are not lampshades? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it looks a bit like a lampshade, doesn't it? It seems Frank is cracking on as well. Oh. oh. It's my Japanese girlfriend. I actually got them in Tokyo. You bought them in Tokyo? Oh, yeah, yeah. I was up there for some little while. Did you buy them in America? When I was in the Navy. Actually, they're really they pretty. They always look lovely on yes. white wallpaper. Yes, yes. Marvellous. Yes, actually, that, they are lovely. While Victoria's found some memories of her own. This is what I think oh, of it is. It's that's might... a posh might... one. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that's it? It's my director's chair <laughs> from my bedroom. Now, let's see. Oh, yes. <laughs> what does it feel like sitting in that chair again? Yeah. Strange, because the last time it must have been about 30 years ago. Yes. yes. Yeah, very 30 old. 30 years yes, ago. Yes. Does it My feel chair. the same? It does. 
<laughs> Are you going to hang on to the chair? I think, much as I'd like to, I think this chair's got to go. Because <laughs> obviously I don't have the Hollywood room now to go with <laughs> the other bits and bobs. So, uh, so yeah, I'm not quite sure of it. So I think this will, this will be donated to charity and hopefully uh, a budding director will snap it up. Yeah. Looks like Victoria's director's chair has ended up in the outtakes. But in Frank's many boxes I've come across what appears to be a lost treasure. What's this? RSM Bond? Yeah, that... that's, our, that's my father. Oh, it's your dad. He was... Uh... With best wishes from the NCOs and men of 220 field coin, 1940. Yeah, he was in the First World War. Yes. And in the trenches, he was a sapper, Royal Engineers, and he was due to retire in 1940. Oh. And, of course, in 1939, I joined the Navy. And he said, why do you join the Navy? I said, well, there's going to be a war, and I'd rather not be killed, and the better chance for me is in the Navy, not the Army. Wow. He was very upset. During World War II, Frank took part in the daring Arctic convoys, sailing through the frozen Northern Ocean, dodging enemy U-boats to deliver much-needed supplies to Russia. I'd forgotten, actually, it was in here. Yeah. I thought we may have it at home, because uh, I've looked for it from time to right. time. And this is a cigarette and box. Yeah, it's... Um, I wonder if it's silver. Yeah, it's probably worth a bob or two. I think it's worth finding out a bit more about it, so I've sent Frank and Victoria off to see Bill Brackenbury, whose firm has specialised in all things silver and shiny for 80 years. Frank, can you tell me anything about this? Do you know anything about Well, the this? only thing that I can tell you, really, was that it was my father's. After that, I haven't got a clue. Right. Mm -hmm. it is a t it's a table cigarette box. Um, Wooden lined, which helped keep the cigarettes moist. Mm -hmm. It has a wooden base here. Sometimes they, <clears throat> they had a lead base, but this is a wooden one. It is of the period, because this, is, this was hallmarked Birmingham 1934. What's quite interesting, if you look at the top of the box, there is what we call engine turning, but it's done in a deco style. It's got very much the, the 1930s deco motif running this way and around the edge of the box, which makes it attractive. Mm. Cigarette cases and boxes became popular in the Victorian period. They were often given on special occasions. A case presented to Tsar Nicholas II of Russia by his wife on the birth of their daughter recently came up for auction with an estimate of £150,000. So has Frank been hoarding a fortune or has it gone up in smoke? To be honest, Frank, these kind of objects they're not worth a huge amount of money these days, partly because people have stopped smoking, yeah. partly that. You're going to get only yeah. tens of pounds for it. But personally, I would think the value of this piece is to the family because of the history, OK? And I don't know whether you have anybody who you might want <laughs> to give this to. Well, I have a grandson who's six. Right. He was a special arrival. Right. So he's going to get that. Well, it's one fewer item for Frank's auction hall, and after 27 years in the dark, at least it's going to a good home. That's a good surprise for young Ben. He'll be... He won't appreciate it now, but uh, many years' time he definitely will. Mm. Wouldn't he think so? I think so, yes, yeah, yeah. Kim and Wendy are coming to terms with Kim's jumble of forgotten belongings, boxes and bags. OK, then. All right, then, what we got? What we got? What um, we look at? What's this? Abswing. Well, you know I won't be using that. Oh, Kim, yeah. 2007, you sure you don't want this? Nah. <laughs> with Kim's out-of-sight, out-of-mind motto, some items in this stash must have passed through her hands and gone straight into storage. It's a Christmas gift from somebody. Whoever bought this for Kim, bless her cotton socks. Look what she's done to it. Don't buy her again. Huh? What is it, Kim? It says, girls mega four puzzle pack. What? It must be puzzles. I love you. Do you want it? No. OK. Why did you buy it again? Obviously, it was a Christmas present. Oh, you think so? I think so. You sure? And obviously, I've forgotten I bought it and by the okay. time it comes to Christmas. Cos you know what I do? I buy them in January, don't I? But despite the unpromising start, it's not long before Kim is in the money. Oh, my God. What's, What's that? 50, 50 pounds! Are you sick? <laughs> what 
to wet myself. Why would I put 50 pounds in my little... Where'd you get it from? That's what I'd like to know. Unbelievable. Kim's been paying to store cash. Another 20! You're having a laugh, Kim Allen. <laughs> oh, I'm making money today. Oh, we're making money. <laughs> I said I was cold before, but I ain't cold anymore. Wow! You know, well, it is. I like to keep money in my bags, just in case. And there's more where that came from. But not every discovery is such good news. Oh, I like that brown bag. Mm -hmm. You... I bought you that oh, two years you? ago or last year. I'm going to work this <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm going to slap you. I really did. It's lovely. I did say I like it. I think I better step in before this sister act takes a wrong turn. I'm going in. <laughs> Girls, we're not having words, I... are we? <laughs> You're not falling out already. She's not helping me. She's trying to... Do you know when you buy someone a gift? I bought her a lovely gift here. Do you uh, even remember that yeah, I bought but it? You should have um, asked me first before you bought it. You were just about asking first. <laughs> I thought you guys were friends. <laughs> there are enough clothes and shoes here to open a shop, but most of it could do with the boot. These could go to a charity shop, couldn't they? Yeah. Actually, they're in good nick, yeah, and these ones as well, yeah, couldn't they? Yeah, the other one yeah. for that one. Yeah. Should I put that to charity? Yeah, definitely, as long as she's on. Where's charity, okay. then? Two separate feet. Thank you. What is this? That's an um, abs is machine, it? isn't it, where you go like that? You stand on it and you do something. It's one of the Charity? Those, um, yes. Yeah. This hoard is such a mess that somewhere, shopaholic Kim has forgotten she's been storing store vouchers. Let's have a look at these vouchers. Oh, Where are they from? This looks yeah. very old. <laughs> but we don't know how much is on that uh, one. How, that could be a good surprise. Yeah. So all this is essentially money, isn't it? It is money. Think of all the stuff you're going to buy. You, I'm keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> this is sell, yeah. Yeah. With no time to spare for Kim and Frank, the pressure's on. I'm surprised. But as soon as you take the tops off, I'll recognise it. It looks like a table of some description. That's one, yes, that's right, there's a table. It needs to go over there under the sale gang. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Oh, <laughs> wow. I think actually like that's that? going to go into charity. Yeah. Frank and Victoria have a healthy skip pal, but it can't all be all junk. Victoria, what are you thinking about this thing? Well, I'm not sure what it is, actually. Is it maybe a, a wine holder or something? Water or something. Uh, yeah. Are we saying charity? Charity, or do you think we should try and sell it? Or... <laughs> I think maybe, maybe one for the charity, yes. While the sisters are finally doing it for themselves. It's for the bathroom, that is. You're keeping this, then? Yeah. The piles seem to be growing, and Kim's definitely bagging a lot for charity. For Victoria, it's time to take stock of a 27-year-old worry. Tell me, how does it feel to see the contents of your former life just spread out? I've had sleepless nights for the last 20 years, wondering what to do with all this stuff and what's going to happen to it. So it's lovely. It's good to see it all out here and I know what I'm dealing with and, and also to see things that I haven't seen for years as well. I find it quite cathartic, actually. So it's a good thing. Then. It's a good thing, yes. So it needs, it's a, it's, it'll be a catalyst yes. for action. Time's up. Finally, both pairs have managed to sort their items into keep, skip and sell piles. Not much in Frank and Victoria's keep pile. Well, Kim has finally managed to create order out of chaos. Next, I want to find out if there's any hidden treasures buried among them. Coming up, is Kim about to clean up at auction? Oh, I've got a real fetish for these. You interested in buying it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. And have Frank's Hong Kong crate been full of Eastern promise after all? So let's hope well, nice everything goes this time. Here we are. Happy with it? Yes, I am. Yeah. Earlier on storage orders, we met Kim and her sister Wendy. Kim's been sorting through her hopeless hoard one that's been stored to the tune of £1,000 a year. Frank and his daughter Victoria have been battling with the remainder of their 27-year-old time capsule. 
I ask them to get strict with their stuff and decide to keep it, skip it, or sell it. To see if there's any cash hidden in the stash, I've asked antiques expert Tom Keane to take a look. With 20 years' experience in the collectibles trade, Tom is a practiced hand at sorting the trash from the treasure. So, what's he found? First thing, any cold in there? <laughs> it is. It's freezing. You can store, you can store meat in here, couldn't you? If you better this, Aggie, like, she's half dressed again. Have a look. <laughs> Come on. I will oh. take it. Now we're going to we'll make it quick now because I'm going to start freezing. <laughs> I've been very carefully through what you've got and uh, bags, designer bags, and whatever you know. Now, believe it or not, I know a lot about handbags. I bought loads of them throughout my life. Never owned one, but bought <laughs> loads. Um, Always look for a label inside, as you no doubt know, girls. But if you're going to sell these bags and you buy a proper designer handbags, keep the original receipts. That adds to the value. OK. But unfortunately... Because we haven't. You haven't, so we can't really start selling these as designer handbags. Mm. Nice, useful, do the job still, but uh, not too valuable. OK. Well, a good tip, but not a great start for finding any riches among those rags. <laughs> the... this... Tea set, unfortunately, mm. broken. Mm. It wasn't valuable anyway, thank God. So it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice way of putting it, isn't it? Love you yeah, too. There you are. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> had it been worth hundreds of pounds, it'd been broken. Oh. I've been gutted for you, but it was uh, not good in the first place. So oh, there you are. Oh, it's a shame. They look good. Oh, no. They're they? very good for drinking cups of coffee out of. But actually, <laughs> something. Yeah, no good espresso. at all. You're okay. talking. You're talking seriously. Five pounds that lot. Oh wow. Oh, God. Five pounds that lot of boot oh, sale, dear. three quid the clock. Oh, dear. Oh, no, more bad news. Aggie, what do you think the most valuable thing here is? Golly, what, the table that everything's on? I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> warm, warm, unfortunately. Oh, is it Mr Henry? The Henry Hoover. Oh. I've got a real fetish for these. <laughs> I, mean, I use them fairly often, then. But I reckon you'll get £40 pounds for that, 40 or oh, 50 quid for that. Really? Yeah, really? I've bought them for that loads of times. Yeah. You interested in buying it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll have a deal. We'll talk after. Really, I think we've got. I think you've got a fantastic boot sale. Yeah. And I think with the two characters, you're going to do well. So, nothing for auction, but Tom feels there's a good haul for a car boot sale. And he's also known to Shopaholic Kim's huge collection of clothes. So, I know you've got a pile of clothes, and uh, I thought. I remember wearing a pair of these. So oh, just you yeah. took a fancy to that one. I, I did. I mean, it's been a few years since I thought of squeezing this one. Look, you can see, can't you? You can imagine it, can't you? Here you are. Seat you down to the ground. Well, thanks very much. Any yeah. disco in London, I'll be there with it. <laughs> with so many old clothes, I've sent Kim and Wendy to meet Rachel Groves and Rochelle Rossellini, experts in the second-hand clothes trade. With people wanting to cash in on their old clothes, shops offering Wonga for your wardrobe are cropping up all over the country. So maybe it'll be a rags to riches tale for Kim. So you're looking to make some money out of your unwanted clothes? Oh, yeah, we sure are. Well, you're in the right place. <laughs> Definitely. It's wonderful. Yeah. What we normally do is just check through the items, because mm. we have three grades of clothes. We've got a top grade, which is basically your uh, tag stuff, or it's almost brand new. It's got a fashion element to it, because we can give you a premium price for that. That's 80 pence a kilo. Mm. Yeah, that's um, very good. That's very good. And then we have um, just the standard clothes, which have been, you know, worn a few times, yeah. you know, got a little bit of wear to them. And then for that, we pay 50 pence a kilo. There's a strong market in second-hand clothes at the moment, and vintage clothes shops are increasingly common. 50s and 60s pieces are particularly in vogue on the back of retro TV shows, with some originals selling for hundreds of pounds. Not bad for a second-hand frock. But will Kim's old clubber claw her back some cash? This, for example, that's a very good quality. So for this sort of item, you'll get 50 pence a kilo for this lightweight material. So for this, we'd be able to pay you 80 pence a kilo. It's a great start. Let's hope there's bags of promise here. This looks fairly new. It is new, yeah. Another 80p one here, ladies. Oh, wow! Fantastic. The mounds are mounting up. This is a beautiful dress. It looks like it's hardly big. When I bought it, I didn't realise until I got back to England that it's see-through here. <laughs> so I <laughs> thought... Sounds a bit risque to me, Kim, but the ladies are rifling through your garments at great speed. And with all the clothes sorted, it's time to weigh them and see what Kim's got. 
So Kim, that's eighteen pounds thirty-nine. Oh, wonderful! Oh, but I'll let's, uh, it up for you for eighteen pounds fifty. Eighteen oh, pounds fifty. Thank you. So let's uh, let's get the money. Not a fortune, but considering it was just lying in plastic bags in her storage unit, Kim's come up trumps. So how does she plan to spend her score? It's not quite enough money for a spa, is it, Wendy? No. But I suppose we could go and go and have, go and have a drink a and then... cocktail, can't we? Yeah, we can. Mm, that'd be nice. Yeah. Tom didn't think there was anything of significant value in Kim's items to take to auction, so I've sent Kim and Wendy to Hopwood Car Boot Sale in Birmingham to see if they can charm any punters into parting from their pounds. We're hoping to go with an empty car and a pocket full of money. Amen. What are you aiming for? Mm? To spend some of your money, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Not the plan is to leave with less than they arrived with. How much do you think we're going to sell this one for, Kim? These for two for a fiver. Not two for a fiver, you mad? You should have and started I said with no, five. three, and that's three. Three. What do you think then? Yeah, probably a fiver each for those. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Give up on you. You know what? I'll do the selling. All right. You concentrate on the shoes. Leave me to do the clothes. Okay, whatever you say. With sisterly squabbles settled, Kim and Wendy can concentrate on setting up their wares. The key to attracting buyers at any car boot sale is in the display. Make sure the best items are in prime view and priced competitively. Be prepared to haggle if you want to get rid. And it's not long before they get their first sale. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have just made three pounds. Wonderful. Well done, girls. The first sale of the day, and they're on a roll. Something perfect for you. Certainly. Think you'd look gorgeous in that. Why do you keep winking at me? <laughs> you, you two keep winking at me. <laughs> because we need to get some sales, and I think it's the only way yeah, to attract people. <laughs> how much is it? How much would you give me for this? Uh, 50p. <laughs> that much? The sales technique seems to be working, but being surrounded by so many things for sale, is Kim slipping into temptation? Can't wait to have a look round, just have a look and see what's what's out there to buy. No, you're not going right there, Kim, because the money we're making, you're going to spend back on those, so now you can stay right here. OK, then, I suppose, at the end of the day, I don't want to bring more stuff into the house. I want to get rid. Mm. If I look round and I see something at the right price and I think, you know, I like to snap it up. That's me, isn't it? Mm. I like a bargain. Now, that's not what I want to hear. Perhaps those rain clouds could have a silver lining by dampening her urge to buy more stuff that she doesn't need. Because of the weather, it's deterred people away. So um, we believe if the people were here, we would have done all sold right. More, yeah, we would have yeah. sold more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We chose the wrong day. <laughs> yep, unfortunately. But, but but we sold some, didn't we? Yeah, we sold some. Yeah. yeah. But definitely come back again, won't oh, we? Oh, definitely come back again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, an unfortunate end to the car boot and any chance of shifting the whole hoard. But was it enough to dampen Kim's decluttering spirits for good? So now that you've had the chance to deal with everything that you had in storage, how are you feeling about it all? Oh, a lot better. It's a lot of weight lifted off me. Really? Yeah, definitely. Kim took £23 at the car boot and £18 at the second-hand clothes store. She made a surprise discovery of £120 of long-forgotten cash and some store vouchers worth £100. That's a total of £261. And if she can empty her storage unit, she'll save another £1,000 a year. It's been a long haul for shopaholic storer Kim, but I think she's learnt her lesson. If you don't use it, you don't need it. I know now, once my house is completed, what I have to do is just take everything out of the storage right into the house. I don't have to sort through anything. So I've all done the that. stuff you have now in storage is what you actually will keep. use That's and right. keep. Yeah, yeah. You've encouraged me to declutter. Excellent. <laughs> and what does that feel like? Brilliant. I'm pleased Kim's made a step in the right direction. Wow. Towards clearing some of her debts she's been storing on her plastic. Coming up is Frank ringing in the riches. Does it work, Frank? <laughs> no. Nope. Sure. Oh, no. <laughs> ding ding. Are you interested in buying these? And will the auction be filled with Eastern promise? 
85 pounds, 90 there, 95, 100. Earlier on storage orders, we met Kim from Birmingham, who has spent £1,000 on storage over the past year. Kim managed to sell some of her many bags of old clothes to a clothing depot and then cleared more of her stuff at a car boot sale. It's a small step, but Kim is definitely on the way to shifting her whole collection and clearing some of her debts. Now it's time to catch up with Frank, who spent almost £50,000 on storage since he and his family returned from living in Hong Kong 27 years ago. We're revisiting Frank and Victoria after they previously made a small dent in his massive hoard. For sale. <laughs> For Frank and daughter Victoria, it's been a trip down memory lane. I've called on antiques expert Tom Keane to look through Frank's items and help get his hoard off his hands. Last time Frank opened up two of his units and made £218 at auction. So, what's Tom found this time? You've got some antique looking things. Oh, when I first saw this, this is a temple coro. And I thought, oh, this is good. Can what is a temple coro? Well, they use it for incense burning and what have you in temples. But mm -hmm. um, this is um, got a plastic inside. Oh, right. And um, figured with a, uh, a deity, and it's uh, a nice bucket. Looks mm. the part. Oh. But it's not. So that's going to be worth £20, mm -hmm. £30 if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. You bought some <laughs> Regency style furniture. This is inspired from around 1800, 1820 in England. Now the Chinese can't help themselves, but they've always got to put this little groove in. Oh, right. The English wouldn't do that, it'd be a flat table. Ah, right. So That's to catch the crumbs, isn't it? To catch the crumbs. That table and chairs are worth about £60 or £80 pounds a lot. That's a lot of furniture for a measly £60 to £80, pounds, but if it sells, it will save a lot of space. So, anything else, Tom? Table there with bone inlay, again, £10, £15. Pounds. Okay. Um, another drum table, made in the same place as this was, £20, £25. Pounds. The binoculars. Now, the binoculars are interesting. Did you go racing there? I used to go. <laughs> Did you? And people used to ask me for a tip and I used to give it to them. <laughs> and do they ever win? No. Same as my tips then. <laughs> Things don't change. <laughs> They're useful binoculars, um, 20 or 30 pounds worth. So, are you looking forward to getting rid of some of this stuff? I am, because I won't have to think about it anymore. It's nice now to have seen it yeah. and I've got it in my mind yes. and it, it's brought back some fantastic memories, mm -hmm. but it would be good to let finally it go. let it go. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, absolutely mm -hmm. right, yeah. Frank's done a great job of sorting through the remainders of his time in Hong Kong and Tom has selected a nice haul for auction. There's the Coro style ice bucket with a valuation of 20 to 30 pounds. The Regency style table and chairs with a 60 to 80 pound estimate. The small inlay table, which is valued at 10 to 15 pounds. Frank's racing binoculars with a 20 to 30 pound estimate. And the round Regency style table, which is valued at 20 to 25 pounds. Tom's identified most of the items that should go to general auction but he spotted a Chinese bronze table lamp and Tibetan-style bell that deserve further inspection. So I've sent them along to see Justin Fryer in West London, expert in Chinese and Asian fine art and antiques. What's his verdict? What do you think? Well, obviously, it's a bronze top. Um, it's an attractive enough thing. It's obviously of not of a great age. As, I mean, looking at it, I mean, you have got enough definition on there, but it isn't the best cast um, mm -hmm. piece. Obviously, if there were more detail to that, it would be a lot more expensive um, yes. piece. Right, right, just right, in right. case you haven't seen it, Justin, I'm going to okay. show you yes. how this has got a telescopic, a telescopic <laughs> arm on it. Hang on. There you are, just yeah. always a good selling point. Look at that, look. Right. It's, it's, almost, yeah, it's almost a standard right. lamp. Look Mod at that. Modern technology. shade on the top. There you are. And uh, exactly. if, if you thought the shades were in the way, you could drop it down and speak to your loved one across the table. Look at that. Yeah. Yes. With the expanding Chinese economy, genuine Chinese antiques can command a very high price. Recently, a 19th century jade marriage bowl sold at auction for over £250,000. Well, the lamp hasn't exactly lit up Justin's face, but what about the Tibetan bell? Justin, what do you think of this bell? Do you think it's a Tibetan temple bell or a cow's bell? It's hard to say, isn't it? I mean, it's, to me, it's more of an ornamental. 
mm -hmm. item rather than a sp specific function. Does it work, Frank? No. Does it do? Yeah. No. Sure. More, no more fares, please. <laughs> ding, ding. So, Justin, are you interested in buying these? I mean, I absolutely, I absolutely admit we would do forty, and that's it. Justin, you can't be that hard. I can. I certainly can. <laughs> we have forty one. Most certainly. Well, Usually well, I sit exactly. in the middle and take a commission, but this time I'm sitting out of it. I don't know why. <laughs> well, there we go. Thank you very much. OK, not a valuable antique, but that's another £41 in the pot, and Frank's got the right idea. I don't have to carry them back. Somebody else has got to look after them. And our end of the bargain is marvellous. Now we've come to auction to see the rest of Frank's haul go under the hammer. So, the last of your auction lot's about to go. Are you excited? Well, as I said, apprehensive. Not a little bit worried, you know. It's not whether or not it goes. I'm worried about that it doesn't go. Mm, yes, I do understand that. <laughs> Let's hope they all go. Well, yes, that's fingers right. crossed. Thank you very much, yeah. Mm. I hope they're all looking. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Before the auction begins, there's just time to hear auctioneer Matthew Caddick's take on Frank's lots. Frank Bond has uh, presented us with a mix of items, uh, in particular of interest, the fairly moderately estimated uh, modern Chinese items now. We all know Chinese is doing extremely well, generally speaking, in the market, but although these are reproduction pieces, they're priced right and they ought to sell. Time for the guessing to end and the bidding to begin. Victoria, everything by one item. The table yes. was sold last time. The heaviest item. I know, I know, I know. So let's hope everything goes this time. Here we are. First up is a small round table valued at 20 to 25 pounds. 20 pounds for it, 10 pounds for it. Someone bid me 10 pounds for it. Five pounds for it. Five pounds, I'm bidding six, I'll take now. Five pounds, take six. Six there, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Be brave. 30, 14, 50, 20. 20 pounds on bid. 20. 20 pounds just on the estimate. Next is the Coro style ice bucket with a valuation of 20 to 30 pounds. Lot number 98 now, 20th century resin ice bucket in the form of an archaic Chinese Coro. It's decorated in relief with stylized dragons for 98 and uh, 20 pounds for it. 20 pounds for it. 10 pounds for it. 10 pounds for this Coro. 5 pounds for it. Five pounds on bid, it's no money, I'll take six now. Six there, seven, eight. That's seven pounds there, take eight now. Eight there, nine, ten, eleven. It's no money. At ten pounds, take eleven out. Ten pounds, I'll fill it with ice for you. Eleven. <laughs> and eleven pounds there, all done, I'm selling at eleven pounds and gone. Only eleven pounds, but it all counts. Next to Frank's trusty horse racing binoculars, will they spot a winning bidder this time? And are these worth 20 pounds, start me? The binoculars, £20, £10 for them. Someone put a pour up, £10, start me. £5 for them. God, they're really today, aren't they? £8 yeah. for the binoculars. <laughs> All done at £8. £8, £8 pounds for the binoculars. Lucky. I know, exactly. Oh, dear Frank, not much of a return on that wager. The inlay side table with a valuation of £10, £15 sold for £8. Finally, it's that Chinese-made Regency table and chairs with a 60 to 80 pound estimate. I'm bid already 85 pounds, I'll take 90 in the room. And 85 pounds, 90 there, 95, 100. Oh, but... 10, 120, oh. 130, 140. It's gone over the 100. 150, 160. Says no, 150 pounds still with me. Take 150 pounds. Are we all done and out? It's a cheap table and chairs at 150 and selling. Great. Oh, good. Happy good. good. Yes, I am, yeah. 150 pounds, that's more like it. Well, that was a bit of a mixed bag there, wasn't it? Absolutely. Mm. Oh, Gracious. my goodness. Yes. yes, I mean, the, I thought it was amazing that the cherry wood table with the chairs went for more than the estimate. It was £150. The auctioneer thought maybe between 60 and 80 So that's mm. a result. Yeah, right. someone must have really wanted that. Yes. Yeah. After commission, Frank's featured items have made £181 at auction plus he sold two items to the specialist for £41. That's a total of £222. 
The other thing's a bit of a mixed bag, weren't they? I mean, That's the right, yeah. good thing is, everything's been sold. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's all yeah. you wanted, isn't it, really? That's right. yeah. Got rid of everything. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think it's absolutely mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Marvellous, kid. Yeah. And someone else can enjoy those well, that's items right, as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care what they do with it, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> It's been a journey into the past for Frank and Victoria as they've taken stock of some precious mementos of their time in the Far East with wife and mum Eileen. Memories that have been locked away for 27 years. Plus, they've got shot of their storage once and for all. Overwhelmed with unwanted items, today's hoarders struggle to see the light at the end of the storage tunnel. But with a little bit of hard work, it's shining brightly once again. Join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders.